Solaris, Galactica Supernova, and the Flying Fox. These multi-million dollar superyachts in this idyllic Turkish port are linked to Russian oligarchs. While several vessels have been seized by the U.S. and the EU, tracking experts say these yachts are in Turkey because the country isn't imposing sanctions on them. And intelligence analysts say the boats are taking measures to slip off the radar. They were turning off their tracking systems, so it also became sort of an international hunt. This former CIA officer and other internet sleuths have made it their mission to track them down. These boats can't stay out forever, right? So as authorities around the world are chasing down the sanctioned assets, here's how intelligence analysts are using vessel tracking data, satellite images, and on-the-ground sources to help find them. In early February, just before Russia invaded Ukraine, some superyachts linked to Russian oligarchs were docked in Barcelona, Spain. Although definitions vary, marine experts say superyachts are usually over 80 feet long, while mega yachts can span over 200 feet. You could go down to the port of Barcelona and see really do a dozen or so at least uh, super and mega yachts. Not all of them were Russian, of course, but a lot of them were. That's Alex Finley, a former CIA officer. She began monitoring oligarchs' yachts while researching for a novel, even before Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine. I would go down to sort of check the status of everything, and then very quickly, as the invasion started, we started seeing all of these yachts uh, take off very quickly from here. That includes Solaris, a 460-foot mega yacht owned by Russian billionaire Roman Abramovich. While it was in Spain, it could have been seized under international sanctions. I was watching her regularly to see when she might flee. Just before sanctions came down on Roman Abramovich, about 36 hours before those sanctions were announced, Solaris did in fact leave Barcelona. To try to find out where the yacht went, Finley and other open source analysts use a tool called Marine Traffic. It collects tracking information from ships and boats from all over the globe using a system called AIS. That works by collecting a transponder signal that's represented by this yellow line here. Data show on March 8th, Solaris set off from Barcelona, traveled over a thousand nautical miles, and four days later arrived off the coast of Montenegro. Tracking information later pinged its location in Turkey. Other vessels owned by sanctioned oligarchs made similar journeys, but were harder to track. That's because their AIS signals stopped reporting a live location. One of them is Galactica Supernova. The vessel is owned by Vajit Alekparov. That's according to the website Super Yacht Fan and a former crew member who spoke to the Wall Street Journal. The Galactica Supernova also ended up in Montenegro after leaving from Barcelona. But then its tracking signal disappeared from the site. So analysts had to look elsewhere for information on its whereabouts. In these cases, they turned to a low-tech tool, eyewitness accounts. Boat captains like Emra Akoyan in Gocek, Turkey, can notice new arrivals. Intelligence analysts that track open source data say that firsthand sources, including local fishermen and Turkish boat operators, can also help them monitor the yachts. Somebody in Turkey can say, hey, we just spotted this particular yacht, and they can send you a photo and you have verification that those things are there. Locals in Gocek have been sharing pictures on social media and have proactively sent information to internet sleuths. Both Galactica, Supernova, and Solaris have been spotted here in this Turkish port by eyewitnesses who spoke to the Wall Street Journal. Intelligence analysts say the country has allowed sanctioned vessels to have safe haven in its ports. Turkey is the only NATO member to have not imposed financial sanctions on Russian oligarchs, signaling instead that it wanted to increase cooperation with Russia. On the ground, residents say there has been a noticeable surge of Russian-linked superyachts in the area since the conflict began. Some of these yachts are also just too big to hide from the eyes in the sky. Satellites. Take the Flying Fox, which was once the largest yacht available for public charter. It can be seen here in satellite imagery. The vessel, 
is linked to Russian oligarch Dmitry Kamenchik, according to the Super Yacht Fanbase website. Flying Fox was added to the sanctions list as blocked property by the U.S. in June. That essentially means it can be seized. Its management company, Imperial Yachts, was also sanctioned by the same authorities. Just a few months before sanctions were placed on the vessel in late April, it traveled away from the coast of Haiti. It sailed across the Atlantic Ocean before arriving in Turkey. The journey was recorded by AIS data, and its location was corroborated by satellite imagery. Satellites can virtually help locate big objects anywhere in the world. With commercial satellite, you can visually see from above. So if you get a, a hint or a clue that a, a yacht might be in a certain place, you can actually look it up with commercial satellite imagery to, to verify that. Those satellite photos have also helped analysts find oligarch-linked boats in the Middle East, where some vessels appear to have migrated during the winter. The Wall Street Journal reached out to Abramovich about the movements of his yacht, but didn't receive a response. Kamenchik and Alekparov couldn't be reached. Imperial yachts didn't respond to a request for comment, and neither did Turkey and Montenegro. As internet sleuths bring more attention to the vessel's movements, authorities are also deploying new resources to track them down. In the U.S., the Department of Justice announced an initiative called Klepto Capture to both search for and seize the assets. The task force is dedicated to enforcing the sanctions, export restrictions, and economic countermeasures that the United States has imposed along with its international allies and partners in response to this unprovoked military invasion. That's in addition to a transatlantic task force led by the EU Commission and other allied countries. But once the yachts, like this one in Spain, are seized, it's just the beginning of a complex process. Namely, the cost of maintaining them. Analysts say costs for another impounded yacht, this one in the U.S., is estimated to be around $10 million a year. Authorities are often paying the bill to prevent the boats from losing their value. The U.S. has said it would look to sell the seized yachts. However, it can be a long and drawn-out process, leaving the fate of many of these vessels up in the air.